The histogram is one of those overlooked features within any photo editing software. And today I'm going to show you how to use the histogram in Luminar Neo to edit your photos. So first off, if your histogram isn't showing on the top right corner here, as you see here, you simply just have to go to the top left corner on the Luminar Neo icon to open up your menu, head to view, and at the bottom you'll see show histogram. Now the histogram is used to show where your exposure is and where certain colors are within your image. On the very left side of the histogram, you have the blacks, okay? The blacks of your image. Right beside the blacks is where your shadows live. In between are your midtones. And then on the right, we have your highlights. And the very right are your whites. On your histogram, you're gonna see these little circles and we're gonna turn them on. And what these are are peak indicators for your highlights and shadows or blacks and whites. Now, you don't see anything on the current image because the exposure is done very well. Now, if I were to increase the exposure, you're going to see these red highlights in your image and that indicates overexposure. So if I turn this button off, you're going to see that the highlights are now blown out. Now the opposite happens. If I bring the exposure down, you're going to start to see these blue highlights and that indicates underexposure. You might have heard a term crushing the blacks. Well, that's what it is because if I take this button off, the details in the blacks are now being crushed together and, and it's almost like a full black where you're losing your details. If we look at the histogram here, we see the blues peaking in the highlights. Now that doesn't mean that it's overexposed. It just means that within this area of the highlights, the blues are most dominant in the highlights. And the reason for that is because if you look at the image, blue dominates this photo in the highlights because it's the sky that we're looking at. Whereas the greens and the reds are more peaking towards the midtones because although there are greens and uh, some yellow and oranges, it's a very neutral color and it's not necessarily dominating. For example, if I go into my curves and I pick the green here and I slide the greens towards the left here, you see now those green peaks up here are going towards the highlights. And if you look at the image, now the greens are more prominent. Now, typically you want to use the histogram in camera to get the best exposure. Now, how do we use the histogram to edit our photos? But this example was a photo that my son took at school. He's learning photography right now, which I'm pretty stoked about. But in this image, he was using my Canon M50 with the 55 to 250 millimeter zoom lens. And I believe he was shooting this in auto. So technically composition is great. He's exposing for the subject, but the background is blown out and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It can be corrected in post. And sometimes when you're in those situations where you got exposed for the subject or the background, a lot of times you're going to pick the subject. And again, because this was shot in auto, the camera doesn't know what you're shooting. It just does an analysis of the whole image and does its best to give you an auto exposure. Now, with that being said, if we look at the histogram here, the colors and the tones are being pushed to the right in the highlights and the whites. And you can see that in the background here and even in the umbrella here. OK, so if we were put on our peaking indicators here, you're going to see the reds are indicating overexposure. So how I would edit this, there's a couple of things. You could do a general decrease of exposure until those peaks go down. And now it looks a lot better. There's some details coming out, but you still see that there's a bit of washed out areas like in the water here near the arms. So what I would do instead of decreasing the exposure is first experiment with the highlights and the whites, because generally speaking, the exposure is not bad. It's just the highlights and the whites are being overexposed. So first we can bring the highlights down. And now you see all those details are coming to life, okay, without adjusting the exposure. And we do have a little bit of peaking here, but that's, that's a lot better than it was before. It's more acceptable. 
Now I'm gonna reset this and show you that you could get the same effect with the whites as well. But it's very different because you still have more detail when you bring the highlights down. You could do a combination of the two, but for me personally, I would first bring the highlights down as much as possible. And it doesn't have to be completely peak free because these are really small details. And let's be honest, most people wouldn't even notice that. Now, as we look at the histogram, you see that everything has shifted to the left. For the most part, I would be happy with this exposure. Please note that when you edit your photos this way, it's always best to shoot in RAW so that you have all the details in your file. If you shoot in JPEG, these highlights or shadows may not be recoverable. Again, I want to stress that it's always best to get the best exposure you can in camera. As we look at the edited photo, you see that the highlights are no longer peaking and we do have the blues and the greens that are dominant within the photo here with the greens in the background here, the blues in the umbrella. And even there's some hints of blue in the jacket, more of a gray, but that's why this is peaking. If we click on the peak indicator, we see we're no longer peaking our highlights, except for these small spots, which is still very acceptable. Now, if I do a before and after, you see how much of those details we've recovered from the highlights. And after the edit, how much more better this photo looks. So here's another photo my son took. This is the raw image. But as we look at the peaks here, we see all the colors are more on the darker side of the image, right? So that's not necessarily a bad thing. After the edit, we see that the peaks are still roughly on the same area, if not even shifted even more because now I've darkened the background to add just a little bit of blacks, more shadow, and I gave it some detail, some saturation and color. And you'll notice there's no peaks in the highlights and whites. Uh, most of that area is just here on this side of the photo, but there really isn't any overblown highlights or dominant whites. And that's why the histogram would look like this. And it's very acceptable because this is the particular look I was going for. One tip I'll always give people is that it's better to slightly underexpose than to overexpose because once your highlights are blown out, it's very hard to recover those highlights, even if you're shooting in RAW, if it's that overblown. But if you're shooting in a JPEG format, you can't recover those highlights. So when in doubt, underexpose slightly. Shadows seem to be more forgiving, but again, if you have crushed blacks and really Really deep shadows you may have a hard time recovering those shadows and those blacks and the best thing you can do is shoot 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 experiment shoot everything shoot different exposures learn the histogram and see how it relates to your photos after a certain time it becomes second nature and you'll be able to gauge a scenery and know what settings you need using the histogram really tells you where you are with your exposure. As I mentioned before, I'm preparing a video on how to use curves, so stay tuned for that. But for now, check out this video on HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And this is another way where you can take control of the colors of your images and tweaking those colors in different ways. For now, creators, until the next video, I'll see you when I see you.